Okay, um, we're going to continue with Troll Rules for Life. I apologize for the ghetto junkies outside my window. Eventually, I'm going to, um, if you want to help me move to a better area that doesn't have junkies outside, uh, click the subscribe button and send this video to somebody. And eventually, um, these videos will be coming from a better area without um, junkies. Some different friends and some more the same. In high school, after my first group of cronies had all dropped out, I made friends with a couple of newcomers. I guarantee you all those people are druggies over there at dropouts. They hate reading too. They were just yelling up here. I'm just like, I'd never respond back. They yelled out. Like, hey, white boy, hey. That's what they call me. They came to Fairview as boarders. There was no school after ninth grade, and there was even more remote and aptly named hometown, Bear Canyon. They were an ambitious woodward. In high school, after my first group of cronies had all dropped out, I made friends with a couple of newcomers. So I guess a couple weeks too. They came to Fairview as boarders. There was no school after ninth grade in their even more remote and aptly named hometown, Bear Canyon. There was no school after ninth grade there. They were an ambitious duo. Yes, there were two of them. Comparatively speaking, straightforward and reliable, but also cool and very amusing. When I left town to attend the Grand Prairie Regional College, 90 miles away, one of them became my roommate. The other went off elsewhere to pursue further education. Both were aiming upward. Their decisions to do so bolstered mine. Um, if you're unaware who Dr. Jordan Peterson is, well, I'm sure most of you probably aren't. Um, he is a uh, he's a kind of different kind of guy. He's a very enjoyable personality, um, but his personality probably wasn't the best. Like growing up, he probably uh, wasn't the most popular kid in school. To put it lightly. I was a happy clam when I arrived at college. I found another, an expanded group of like minded He was probably did much better in college, find that. Um, expanded like minded companions, whom my Bear Canyon comrade also joined. We were all captivated by literature and philosophy, where he ran the student union. We made it profitable for the first time in its history, hosting college dances. How can you lose money selling beer to college kids? We started a newspaper. We got to know our professors of political science, science and biology and English literature in the tiny seminars that are characterized even our first year. The instructors were thankful for our enthusiasm and taught us well. We were building a better life. I sloughed off a lot of my past. In small towns, everyone knows who you are. You drag your years behind you like a running dog with tin cans on its tail. You can't escape where you've been. Everything wasn't online then, and thank God for that, but it was stored equally and undeniably in everyone's spoken and unspoken expectations and memory. When you move, everything is up in the air, at least for a while. It's stressful, but in the chaos, there are new possibilities. People, including you, can't hem them in with their old notions. You get shaken out of your ruts. You make new, better ruts with people aiming at better things. I thought this was just a natural development. I thought that every person who moved would have and want the same Phoenix-like experience but that wasn't always the case. One time when I was about 15, I went with Chris and another friend, Carl, to Edmonton, a city of 600,000. Carl had never been to a city. This was not uncommon. Fairview to Edmonton was an 800 mile round trip. I had done it many times, sometimes with my parents, sometimes without. I liked the anonymity that the city provided. Anonymity, that word, huh? Anonymity. I gotta show this door because the junkies are like getting they're walking around the windows so like, you reading? You don't like readers. So I gotta shut the window in the door. that I thought they were standing like outside the window on the third floor and looking up with a little dog barking. But there's 50 apartments here and they're obsessed with me. I don't need to complain on them. Other people will. They're obsessed with me because they can hear me. Anyways. Where were we? I like the anonymity that the city provided. I like the new beginnings. I like the escape from the dismal, cramped adolescent culture of my hometown. So I convinced my two friends to make the journey, but they did not have the same experience. As soon as we arrived, Chris and Carl wanted to buy some pot. We headed for the parts of Edmonton that were very exactly the worst of Fairview, 
We found the same furative street vending marijuana providers. We spend the weekend drinking in the hotel room. We spent the weekend. I'm sorry, it's like distracting because they're like whistling up here now. It's okay. This is my cat. Yeah. You know, it's okay. While we're taking a break here with the junkies whistling, we're taking a break. We smell good at Guiana. You like them junkies? Sometimes they'll throw things up here. The police don't do anything. So why? Okay, where was I? I like the skate from the dismal looking. We spent the weekend drinking in the hotel room. Although we had traveled a long distance, we had gone nowhere at all. Oh, okay. So like him and his friends, they like drove all the way to Edmonton, a big city. Like, we're in the city, and they didn't leave the hotel room. They just did what they normally do in their small town. That sounds very familiar. I saw an even more egregious example of this a few years later. I had moved to Edmonton to finish my undergraduate degree. I took an apartment with my sister, who was studying to be a nurse. She was also an up and out of their person. Not too many years later, she would plant strawberries in Norway and run safaris through Africa and smuggle trucks across the Turing mid Sahara Desert and babysit orphan gorillas in the Congo. Oh, okay, sister's so cool. We had a nice place in a new high rise overlooking the broad valley of the North Saskatchewan River. We had a view of the city skyline in the background. I bought a beautiful new Yamaha upright piano in a fit of enthusiasm. The place looked good. I heard through the grapevine that Ed, Chris's younger cousin, had moved to the city. I thought that was a good thing. One day he called. I invited him over. I wanted to see how he was faring. I hoped he was achieving some of the potential I once saw in him. This is not what happened. Ed showed up older, balder, and stooped. He was a lot more not doing so well young adult and a lot less youthful possibility. His eyes were the telltale red slits of the practice stoner. Ed had taken some job lawn mowing and casual landscaping, which would have been fine for a part-time university student or for someone who could not do better, but which was wretched low-end as a career for an intelligent person. He was accompanied by a friend. See, Dr. Peterson, Jordan Peterson, he is really judgmental about like everybody, you know? Even if you're 40, he's like, good luck, your life is gonna suck, you know? Like, he's just like so judgmental, like, that job is beneath you, but he does like, he doesn't bullshit, you know, he's not PC or polite about it. But there are circumstances and different uh, things for everybody that, and exceptions. Okay, it was his friend, I, okay, he was accompanied by a friend. It was his friend I really remember, he was spaced, he was baked, he was stoned out of his gourd. His head and his head in our nice civilized apartment did not easily occupy the same universe. My sister was there. She knew Ed. She'd seen this sort of thing before, but I, I still wasn't... <clears throat> but I still wasn't happy that Ed had brought this character into our place. See, he's so judgmental. judgmental. Ed sat down. His friend sat down, too. Although it wasn't clear, he noticed. It was tra tragic comedy, stone as he was. Ed still had the sense to be embraced. We sipped our beer. Ed's, friends looked up, up, look, Ed's friend looked upwards. My, my particles are scattered all over the ceiling, he managed. Truer words that were never spoken. Well, he wasn't just high on pot, he must have been like on, tripping on acid or something. I took Ed aside and told him politely that he had to leave. So rude. I said that he shouldn't have brought this useless bastard of a companion. He nodded. He understood. That made it even worse. His older cousin Chris wrote me a letter much later about such things. I included it in my first book, Maps of Meaning. The Architure of Belief, published in 1999. I had friends, he said, before, anyone with enough self-contempt that they could forgive me, forgive me mine. What was it that made Chris and Carl and Ed unable, or worse, perhaps unwilling, to move or to change their friendship or improve the circumstances of their lives? Was it in inevitable, a consequence of their own limitations, Nasus illness and traumas of the past? After all, people vary significantly in ways that seem both structural and deterministic. People differ in intelligences. People differ in intelligence, which is in large part the ability to learn and transform. People have very different personalities. Okay, well, if his intelligence is the ability to learn and transform, that's what I'm the best at. People have different personalities as well. Some are active and some passive. 
Others are anxious or calm. I would also add neurotic to there. For every individual driven to achieve, there is another who is indolent. The degree to which these differences are immutably part and parcel of someone is greater than an optimist might presume or desire. And then there is illness, mental or physical, diagnosed or invisible, further limiting or shaping our lives. The way you know. Chris had a psychotic break in his 30s after flirting with insanity for many years. Not long afterward, he committed suicide. Did his heavy marijuana use play a magnifying role, or was it understandable self-medication? Use of physician-prescribed drugs for pain has, after all, decreased in marijuana legal states as Colorado. Maybe the pot made things better for Chris, not worse. Maybe it eased his suffering instead of exasperating his instability. Was it the nihilistic philosophy he nurtured that paved the way to his eventual breakdown? Was that nihilism, in turn, a consequence of genuine ill health, or just an intellectual rationalization of his unwillingness to dive responsibly into life? Why did he, like his cousin, like my other friends, continually choose people who, in places that, were not good for him? Sometimes when people have a low opinion of their own worth, or perhaps when they refuse responsibility for their lives, they choose a new acquaintance, or precisely the type who provide troublesome in the past. Such people don't believe that they deserve any better, so they don't go looking for it, or perhaps they don't want the trouble of better. Freud called this a repetition compulsion. He thought of it as an unconscious drive to repeat the horrors of the past, sometimes perhaps to formulate those horrors more precisely, sometimes in an attempt to more active mastery, and sometimes perhaps because no alternatives beckon. People create their worlds with the tools they have directly at hand. Faulty tools produce faulty results. Repeated use of the same faulty tools produce the same faulty results. It is in this manner that those who fail to learn from the past doom themselves to repeat it. It's partially fate, it's partially inability, it's partially unwillingness to learn or refusal to learn. Motivated refusal to learn. I'm surprised that he didn't add the quote Insanity is the definition of doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. But that's what that made me think of. That was uh, from Jordan Peterson's Struggles of Life. Um, that section was titled, uh, that was from rule number three, make friends with people who want the best of you. And that uh, section was called uh, Some Different Friends and Some More of the Same. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and post this video somewhere uh, and tell somebody about it. Thanks again. Have a nice day.